welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Anorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace hanging out with Cami. We are in Medellin, Colombia. You might remember Cami from a rooftop video that we did about shooting in bright sunlight with a flash. I really enjoyed that video. Today, I'm actually making a video that's in response to the video I just released a couple of weeks ago about triggering studio strobes with an on-camera flash because I used program, I mean, uh, aperture priority mode and that caused a lot of issues for some people and it confused some others. So I got a lot of comments and emails saying, why did you do that? Why didn't you use manual mode? Uh, You're shooting at 60th of a second. It was all wonky. And so I wanna explain why I did that. I and mean, it all has to do with the shutter and how slow the shutter can go when you're shooting handheld and how your camera behaves when you put it on camera flash and how it controls the shutter speed. There's a lot to dive into, but basically what we wanna start with is how slow can you go when you're shooting handheld without a flash, just trying to get a shot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare Cami's Leica. So she's got this Leica M10 here. She's gonna let me borrow that. And we're gonna shoot some handheld shots. And then also we're going to use this modern R5, this Canon R5. It has lens stabilization and in-body image stabilization that works together to give us, according to Canon, eight stops of, uh, of ability to shoot with slower shutter. So really down to like two seconds or something, it's sort of crazy. We're gonna test and see if that's true. So a camera that has no image stabilization and a camera that has some of the best modern image stabilization. And then we're going to learn how all of that stuff works when you put a flash on your camera because all of a sudden the camera starts doing some things and it doesn't matter if you have a modern Canon camera or a modern M10 Leica camera or a Nikon or a Sony, it doesn't matter. There is a menu setting that you can change to tell your camera what to do with the shutter when you have a flash on and it all has to do with slow shutter speed. So that's a lot, we're gonna dive in. So let's get going right now. Let's start with a Leica M10. I'm using this camera because it's fully manual. It has no image stabilization and it has what uh, some photographers refer to as fast glass. So this has a 50 millimeter 1.4 lens on here. You can see that. The reason it's called fast glass is because the aperture is so wide, it absorbs a lot of light. And so you can shoot at shutter speeds that are faster with that open aperture than you could with a lens that had maybe a 2.8 or a 4.5 lens. So the bigger the aperture, the faster the shutter can go because more light is coming into the camera. So this is considered fast glass. And so uh, with a 1.4 lens, you should be able to shoot in low light. But how slow can this shutter go? Well, the rule of thumb for many, many years has been one over the length of your lens. In other words, if you have a 100 millimeter lens, then your shutter speed should be one one hundredth of a second or faster. For a 50 millimeter lens, it should be one fiftieth of a second or faster. So the wider the lens is, the slower your shutter can go. That has to do with camera shake. So let me show you that right now. So I swapped back to the Canon because I'm gonna shoot video with this. I have a 24 to 105 lens. Let me show you what happens when you're at 24 millimeters versus 105 millimeters shooting handheld. So I'm gonna shoot video inside this camera. So Cami, look right at me. And now I have my video going. So image stabilization is off and you can see any little movement with a wide angle lens it's reduced pretty, uh, pretty much. I'm just holding this steady. But when I zoom in and try to hold steady, you can see that there's a lot of camera shake. And so I'm gonna try to fix that um, by turning on image stabilization. So the longer the lens is, the more apparent that camera shake is. So I'm gonna turn on my image stabilization and in-body stabilization so everything is on. Now watch, watch what happens with this camera. So what I'll do is, now I have image stabilization on with the wide angle lens. You can see it's rock solid and even zoomed in, it is rock solid. And so this image stabilization is pretty crazy. Okay, now we're back with the Leica to illustrate that one over the length of your lens methodology. So we have a 50 millimeter lens. So remember, we wanna shoot at 1 50th of a second or faster 
without image stabilization. So let me just give this a try. So I am in full manual mode and I'm gonna come over here and meter this. And so now I am shooting at 1 60th of a second. And so this should be just fine. And I'll take a look at that. And yeah, we have a nice clear image. There's really no camera shake, but let's slow things down a little bit. I'm gonna go down to about 30th of a second with this 50 millimeter lens. I might have to stop down just a little bit, I do. Okay, so now I'm at F2. And now we'll try, okay. Now that's not much different, but you can see that we're starting to get just a little bit of softness. Things are starting to blur a little bit. So let's go even slower. Let's go down to 15th of a second. So that should be about 2.8. We'll try that. And yeah, there we go. Perfect eyes to me. Yeah, there you go, beautiful. Okay, so at 15th of a second, now we're running into problems. So you can see that uh, we really want a 50th of a second with this lens or faster. We really, really want to get faster. The faster the lens, uh, shutter is handheld, the better, unless you're using modern image stabilization. So let's try this with a modern camera to see what we get. We have shown on a camera with no image stabilization that you really need to shoot at one over the length of your lens or faster. Really the longer the lens, the faster the shutter speed should be. So even like at a 200 millimeter lens, I think you need to be at about 500th of a second to compensate for that camera shake. However, if you have a modern in-body image stabilization system or an in-lens image stabilization system, you can get away with much slower shutter speeds and so let's prove that out. So I have my image stabilization on this camera turned off. So this is gonna be uh, acting much like the Leica was, but we're gonna shoot at 105 millimeters, fully zoomed in. So in this light, this light coming from the window, when I look at Cami here, my camera says that I need to shoot at 1 15th of a second, which is too slow for our rule of thumb. We should be at 100th of a second, so that's way too slow. So I'm gonna try this out and see what we get. So this is at 15th of a second. And when we look at that image, sure enough, it's, it's blurry, it's no good. So now all I'm gonna do is turn on my image stabilization, see what happens here. So now I'm gonna take another shot, bam. When we look at this picture, holy moly, that image stabilization is pretty spectacular. It's just fine. So what have we learned? We've learned that our shutter speed needs to be fast to avoid image blur. But we also know that when we have a flash or we're using studio strobes, well, the flash freezes motion. So what does that mean? Well, we're gonna look at that next. Now I've put an external flash on my camera and that is going to change the way that my camera behaves. Now this is true of a Sony, a Canon, a Nikon, a Leica, all of them, almost all of them, have a menu setting for something that's called slow synchro or something similar to that. And what it's saying is when you have an on-camera flash, how slow will you allow your shutter to go? Because what the camera is doing with an on-camera flash or a TTL flash in aperture priority mode is it's first trying to balance, it's trying to get a proper exposure for the ambient light and then balance that with the light from the flash. And so knowing that a slow shutter speed is going to give us some camera shake, when we put an on-camera flash on our camera, the camera knows that we have a little bit of extra light coming from a flash that's gonna freeze motion. So it will limit the shutter speed of our camera to avoid having camera shake with the ambient light. So how does that all work? It's very simple because it's automatic. So let me just show you this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is shoot with this turned off. So my external flash is turned off. So I'm looking through here, I'm gonna turn off image stabilization. So image stabilization is off. And this is saying 1 15th of a second, beautiful. If we take a look at that, sure enough, it's a little shaky, blurry. I'm gonna turn on my external on-camera flash here. Now immediately what happens is my shutter speed jumps 
from 1 60th of a, or 1 15th of a second to 1 60th of a second. Because my camera knows I have this flash on here and I'm gonna get extra light, it knows that its shutter speed should be faster to avoid some camera shake. So that is set in the menu. So if I go into the menu here, I have external speed light control, and then I have a thing called slow synchro. And if you look at that, I have some options. So this says I can go from 1 60th of a second to 1 200th of a second. So as slow as 1 60, as fast as 1 200. I can go down to 1 30th of a second, or I can just say always shoot at 1 200th of a second. So different cameras have different menu settings for this option, but almost all of them have something like this saying, hey, when you put an external flash on there, don't go any slower than this specific speed. So now that I have this on, this is at 60th of a second. Let's shoot that same picture again, same place. So I'm taking this shot and you can see what's happened. The ambient light has been underexposed, but Cami is exposed correctly with this on camera flash. Now what we could do is if we wanted a slower shutter speed, we could use manual mode, we could do all of those things. But when I was shooting in the previous video and I was triggering my studio lights with my on camera flash, I really didn't care about the ambient light. And so I let my slow synchro take care of my camera shake. And I just triggered those flashes with this flash and everything worked out. So for those of you who watched that last episode and were confused, I was using slow synchro in aperture priority mode to take care of all those problems automatically. It's a cool little feature that's in almost every single modern camera. Dig through your manual or your camera settings and you're gonna find something that's similar to that. It might say external speed light control. It might say uh, shutter speed with speed light. It might say external flash uh, speed control, something. It's in there on most cameras and that will help you avoid camera shake with an on-camera flash, or even sometimes if you're shooting with a TTL off-camera flash, it will also help you out. All right, now that you know about slow synchro, we're gonna have a shootout between the Leica M10 and the R5. So the R5 I'm gonna use in on-camera flash with slow synchro set to 60th of a second, full image stabilization. And on the Leica, I'm just gonna use handheld full manual 1.4 and see if I can do a good job not getting blurry images. Let's see which one of these creates more interesting images. Really, I think it's up to the photographer, but this is gonna be a fun time. So let's get going. shootout was really fun. I think both cameras have their pluses and minuses, but that slow synchro is really pretty impressive. And with image stabilization, it's spectacular. Thanks for letting me borrow your M10 <laughs> to do some stuff. If you want to see more of Cami's work, you should really check it out. It's on Instagram. I've included links to her stuff in the description of this video. Also follow me on Instagram. You'll find a lot of behind the scenes stuff and stuff from my travels around the world. So check that out. And always make sure you're subscribed to Adorama TV and turn on the bell. You don't want to miss out on any of the live broadcasts or upcoming specials, any of that stuff. Without that bell turned on, you might miss out on something really spectacular. Thanks so much for joining us and I'll see you again next time.